Well, I'm confident that the Windsor framework that we announced yesterday resolves the issues that people have with the protocol. It restores balance to the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, and that's what was needed. It does three things. It makes sure the flow of goods around our UK internal market is really smooth with our green lane. It makes sure that Northern Ireland's place in the union is protected so that for people living in Northern Ireland, they get all the same benefits, the same products as they would anywhere else in the UK. And crucially, it safeguards sovereignty for the people and institutions of Northern Ireland with a new storm on break, allowing them to stop rules that they don't think are right for them from coming in. So taken in the round, I think it's an incredibly positive step forward. And what I want now is for people to take the time to study the detail, because there's a lot in there, but I'm confident that it does provide a basis for parties to look at it, for all of us to come together and build towards a brighter future for Northern Ireland. The Stormont break, it's not a veto for Stormont. It is a break. The veto would be if the UK government decide that they want to stop the law. Do you think that that can you, can you tell me the circumstances where you think that you would use the Stormont break? And what will that mean for the role of the ECJ? Well, the Stormont break is an incredibly powerful new cross-community safeguard that we've been able to negotiate with the EU. And what it means is that the people and institutions of Northern Ireland are in control of their destiny. And if there's a significant EU law that comes along that will have lasting and significant impact on the everyday lives of people here in Northern Ireland, that the Assembly will be allowed to pull the emergency brake and it's built on something called the Petition of Concern Mechanism, which is a Good Friday Agreement institution, requires the support of 30 MLAs from two parties. And once that's done, it's to be crystal clear, the UK government then does have an unequivocal veto. And what I've said is that the UK government wants to sit down with the parties in Northern Ireland, the Assembly, to codify how the UK government would use that veto to make sure that everyone has reassurance that it will work properly. And that's what I'd like to engage with, with the parties. And it's one of the key parts of this deal. It safeguards sovereignty for the people and institutions of Northern Ireland. It's what people were asking for. And the Windsor framework delivers it. And I think it's more than anyone expected. And I hope that's why people can see that this is a really positive step forward.